All right. So uh, quick recap about uh, uh, the uh, yesterday's like yesterday lecture uh, on partial observable Markov decision process. Uh, so we we've seen that uh, uh, there is a way to uh, to merge uh, planning with inference by introducing this notion of partially observable Markov decision process and uh, the key uh, conceptual objects that we have been introducing is this notion of a belief that is a probability distribution of our states. So the agent uh, assumes that it, it has no direct knowledge of the states, but it has only indirect information through observations. Why? For us. And uh, the agent has this uh, inference device, which is uh, Bayesian inference, uh, adapted to the situation where the, uh, there is an underlying uh, hidden Markov process, and uses this combination of these two notions, a belief and uh, uh, an inference, to construct uh, a decision process, that is, picking actions based on beliefs. Uh, and uh, uh, I, I didn't show you all the math, but uh, uh, I sort of uh, uh, introduced the main idea uh, for solving PMDPs is that to realize that uh, uh, a PMDP is nothing but uh, uh, a mark of decision process uh, in the space of beliefs, in which the transitions between different beliefs are given by a Bayesian inference. Okay, so it's a rather abstract view. Uh, which we'll, we will try to make a concrete uh, in, in one uh, specific example today. Uh, uh, it is nevertheless quite a powerful uh, formal approach because it allows to write down a Bellman's equation for partial observable Markov decision processes, which has the same, uh, roughly the same structure of the ordinary Markov uh, decision process Bellman as it should, because it has to reduce to it in the case where states are actually uh, detectable, measurable. So, in the specific case when uh, the uh, uh, when the uh, observation function here, okay, the probability distribution for observation, if it collapses onto delta functions for the states, that is, observations are states themselves, then uh, all this expression simplifies. The beliefs go into the corners of the belief space. That is. Uh, you get perfect knowledge of where you are at every time. And then this exactly reduces formally to the uh, customary Bellman equation for uh, for Markov decision processes, okay? Uh, so we highlighted the big difficulty uh, is that uh, uh, this equation now is a function functional equation, no linear functional equation, because the, the value function is not a vector any longer, but it's truly a function of a continuous space. So uh, like I uh, told you yesterday, but it's, uh, it's good to, uh, to say that again uh, today. Uh, so uh, how do you go about uh, trying to solve directly this equation? So there, there are some techniques uh, which are relatively recent, okay? Uh, that try to solve this equation. So to fix the ideas, let's consider for a second uh, one of our workhorses that is just a system with two states and two actions. Okay, so the most general one, there will be probabilities, etc. So I'm not uh, uh, detailing all the transitions here, but uh, you, uh, you've seen this already several times. So what is important here is that your belief space, okay, since there are just two states, your belief space is one dimensional, okay? And goes, it's just an uh, interval from one to zero. This is your belief space. Why is that? Because this, you can think that this is the probability of being in state one. And of course, the probability of being in state two is just one minus that. So there's just one single real variable comprised between zero and one that uh, describes the belief space. Uh, so one general idea that I, I will just describe to you uh, very uh, qualitatively, uh, because it's a generic approach to try to solve uh, the, the Bellman's equation for PMDPs, is that uh, uh, you construct uh, uh, a finite set of points. Okay, so this approach is called a uh, finite point or just point. Let's say better. Point based value iteration. 
So the idea is very simple. It's rather than working with a full segment, we choose a certain set of points here. Okay. And we try to solve uh, uh, our Bellman's equation basically only on this set of points. That's the underlying basic idea. So in order to have a manageable set of beliefs. Uh, of course, these beliefs that you choose here, beliefs, must be reachable. Okay, this means that if you start from your initial belief, which might be, for instance, uh, one half, one half, if you have 50% prior on where you are in space, uh, given the states and observations, you must reach one of those beliefs in a by itself. So, one way to construct this, for instance, is to uh, run forward our model and therefore pick some policy, for instance, at random. So, you pick an action at random and you make an observation you end up in a state and make pick another action another observation and uh, if you add all the new beliefs that you have obtained by iterating uh, clearly uh, you get a lot lots of points okay because at every step uh, you can take two actions you can make two observations so from one belief after the next step there will be four beliefs and after two steps, there will be 16. Okay, so after 10 iterations, you end up with a million beliefs. Okay, and these, of course, do not exhaust all the possible beliefs, but they provide you with a set of points here, which is sort of a starting point for trying to use value iteration on those points. Okay, uh, and then you use other ideas. And the next important idea is that uh, if you try to plot the value function, in this belief space, while well, it has a shape like this, more or less. Okay. So you can actually prove that this value function, this is the belief, and this is the value function, optimal value function for the belief, uh, is always uh, uh, a convex function, like a droid, like a droid. Uh, and so one idea is to uh, uh, approximate your uh, value function with a piecewise uh, linear function. Which uh, is based on these points here. So this is another important idea qualitatively to replace a continuous function with its piecewise linear approximation. And then you start and you do one iteration of your value. And then after that iteration, you have to do other technical operations like uh, uh, pruning and uh, uh, enriching your space of beliefs. So some beliefs uh, that uh, are uh, at which your value function is uh, is not suboptimal, you just remove them, and some and you look for other beliefs where you want to improve your approximation. Okay, so it's a very complex algorithm. Uh, the basic ingredients are these ones: work with a finite set of points and use uh, piecewise linear approximations. Uh, and then there are lots of technical results. For those of you who are interested, I can point you to a reference. Okay, uh, so this this is just to convey the message that uh, uh, there are algorithmic ways of approaching uh, the solution of a of a um, PMDP in rather large spaces. Also, okay, so it's uh, it's important to know that. But we will not go into the details. Uh, what we will do tomorrow to today. Uh, is, uh, like I told you yesterday, uh, there is a, a subset of problems which uh, uh, lend, lend themselves uh, to a much easier treatment. And these are the problems in which uh, uh, your transition probabilities your transition probabilities uh, and your uh, observation models uh, are, in a sense, simple. So they belong to a class of uh, likelihoods and transitions which are described by simple probability distributions. And, uh, and there exist uh, conjugate classes of distribution of priors by which uh, the Bayesian uh, uh, updating uh, leaves them in that class, okay? So this was a highly uh, formal statement and involved to say just uh, uh, in words that uh, if the beliefs are Gaussians, 
the transitions are Gaussians and the likelihoods are Gaussian, then the new beliefs will be Gaussian. And we can solve the Bellman's equation not in the space of probabilities, but in the space of the parameters of the Gaussian, which is much smaller, of course. We will not do this today. What we will do this today is we'll, we'll discuss the problem of Bernoulli bandits, that is coin flipping, deciding what coin to flip. Uh, because in that case, uh, the transition probability is simple because it's just uh, a, a unit. Okay, it's the identity. States don't change. And uh, uh, the likelihood to observe uh, 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 an outcome is Bernoulli. And if we, as we will see, if we use uh, beta distributions for uh, the beliefs, we can uh, write down uh, this Bellman equation in a much, much more simple form and solve it. Okay, so that's the plan for today. If there are any questions on this uh, sort of broad framework, uh, please do not hesitate to ask. Otherwise, I'll uh, leave the floor to uh, Emanuele. Uh, and I have to make you host, which I will do immediately. Okay, so I will share my screen. Okay, you're the host now. Okay, perfect. So thanks uh, for being here and for in the introduction. Uh, so today, as we just uh, saw, we will deal with uh, with the two arm bandits in the in the case of uh, partially observable uh, system. Uh, so it's now I've split the lecture in two, uh, but the timing is completely random in the sense that uh, we will have a break in the middle, but I'm not sure where when this uh, middle will be. Uh, please ask all the questions and if at a certain point you are uh, exhausted, then it's a good place to make a, a break. In the first part, uh, we will see in this very specific case how to, uh, how these ideas of belief of Bayesian updates and uh, are in a concrete way. Um, so first we will um, We'll see, okay, we have this system of coin flipping, what we know and what we don't know. So we will lose our complete information of the state. So we will introduce the beliefs. We will see what actually are these beliefs and how to deal with them. And, uh, and we will exploit this fact that uh, Bernoulli and beta distribution are conjugate to have a, a complete picture of how to deal with uh, beliefs. Then most probably we'll have the break. The second part is that we will use all this information we've gathered to transform this, uh, this uh, non-dealable uh, system of a partially observable uh, two bandits, uh, Bernoulli arm um, uh, bandits, into a rather simple uh, mark of decision process in the belief states, uh, space states, and we will use basically some technology we already have to solve it uh, perfectly exactly not exactly but in a in a rather um, controlled way up to the end um, so let's start with the description of the problem so we have the two armed bernoulli band you you will have seen it uh, several times by now uh, it's it's a standard let me perhaps increase a bit the size okay uh, we will have just this simple system, we have only one state, so we we are deal we are dealt two coins, and one coin which is called action one uh, has the probability q one to to give me a success with a reward of one, and a probability one minus q one to give a reward of zero. The second coin has a different probability, but it's the same. So uh, both coins have Bernoulli, so zero one with some probability. And uh, of course, my, my aim in life is to maximize the reward in a, in a long term. Now, uh, as you can see, since we have two coins with two different probability, and we assume from now on that the two coins are, are perfectly independent one of the other, uh, there is a whole space of possible uh, cases, of po possible space uh, states which are the 
they couple so the two probability. In particular, it's, uh, we have uh, we have this rect uh, with square here, of zero to one probability of one uh, of one coin, zero to one probability on the other coin. Each point in this space correspond to one precise realization of the two arm bandits. For example, this point here is the one in which I've dealt two coins, both very fake, and they only give uh, fails, whatever I do. So 100% probability of giving a uh, fail for both of them. This here is uh, one with uh, Q2 is equal to one. So Q2, the second coin always gives me a success. But the first coin is a probability of 0 0.5, which means that 50% times fail and 50% success. So whenever I am in a, in a specific point, my uh, options are very clear. I, I will just try to maximize uh, uh, and use only the coin with, with a better, with a best uh, probability. Of course, we are now in the problem where uh, we don't know everything. We don't know everything because we will see, we don't know exactly where we are, but we know a lot of things. So this is a case in which I have a partially observable and we are model based. So we perfectly know how the system work. So what is known? Uh, for example, the first thing which is known is that uh, when I have, I have fixed the Q1, Q2, I know how the reward of the function is dealt. So if I know the state, the reward uh, function is perfectly known. And it's a Bernoulli, as we said, uh, essentially the probability of, give, uh, of having a result. Uh, for example, if I have Q1, Q2, and I choose to, to act with the first coin is this here. So A is just a normalization, I forget about it. It's, it's important because we will see many times I have a Q1 to the R. So if it's a success, Q1 to one, one minus, my one minus Q1 to the one minus R. So if it's success, this is goes to one. And, and if it's a, a fail, um, so if it's a success, it's Q1. And if it's a fail, one minus Q1, as we said. Uh, we know it, it's the same exactly thing for the second coin. So this is known fact. So uh, then another thing which is known, which also Antonio pointed out uh, briefly uh, before, is that there are no transition. So wh whatever I do, whatever I, uh, coin I decide to flip, the state will not change. So this turns out to be this condition here. So the probability of transition from one state to another state it's zero if the two states are different. And you will see, you will, if you go back to all the theory uh, um, described yesterday, whenever you have a, an equation in which you have a sum of the rest prime and you have probability of transition, that is simplified because that's, that sum goes away. Only transition between S and S uh, and, and only transition which remain in place are allowed and this happened with probability one. So this is known and it's a very simplifying fact of life. Second thing, uh, it's known what the outcomes of the actions are. So this is uh, the case yesterday also there was this thing, uh, the observable of the state or the percept. So we do not, we don't know the information about the rewards essentially, which are the, the outcome of the actions. And we also know, um, with model for their observation. So given, uh, we know given a state, what is the model for the, the rewards, which is essentially the same as before. It's, it's the Bernoulli distribution of the rewards. So we know a lot of things. What we do not know is the state. So we are not dealt, we are not given the information of what this probability Q1 and Q2 are. That is absolutely out of uh, our, uh, our point. We have not, direct information about that. We need to extrapolate this information from other things. So the idea is, as we um, as pointed out in this uh, series of uh, ideas, is that we have to shift from the idea of a single state to the, single, uh, to the idea of beliefs of the state. And a belief is just a probability distribution of the states, which means that I cannot be I am not given the information that I am in a perfect state here in a point, but I'm given, I, I, I may have the idea that I have a distribution of them. Not all of the states are equally probable. Basically, this means that instead of having a state, I have a function of the state. And this is 
a typical example of, of, uh, of a belief. You can see uh, purple means I have, my, my belief is that I'm not there and I have a maximum, a maximum probability of being in a certain point. Okay, so instead of, of, this is a typical belief, instead of being in a state, I will deal with probability distribution over the state. Notice that this is something which you have done yesterday, but it's, it's, it's rather, um, uh, I think, useful to, 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 to now that you have to think that instead all, all which could be dealt with state now have to be integrated in the belief. So for example, if you have a probability of uh, having a reward given a state, now you have a probability of having a reward given a belief, which just means that you have to integrate or sum over all the, the state, given the probability of being in the state, which is the belief. So it's a, it's a complete shift from being in a single point to having to evaluate or average out over all the probability of being in the, all points. Okay, so, uh, but once we are in the belief, this is a general thing that now that I have some gut feeling, which is not a gut feeling, it's mathematical uh, result of what I, what I see. I have a, a belief of where I am. Now, uh, I, as always, I have to do two things. I have to, uh, I can explore, which means uh, I, I have some idea of where I am or what my belief is, but I, I want to make sure that my belief is more accurate, accurate to have a, a better understanding of where to go afterward. Or I, or I, I can exploit. And so my, bel my, bel my current belief, it says that I should do uh, this action here is the best one. So uh, this um, is the action I have to take. Oh, and as always, we will have to find a, a, a compromise between the two so that I explore uh, as, as much as I can to, to make my belief stronger. And also I have to exploit my beliefs so that I do the, the, what I currently think it's the best thing. Okay. May I, may I add uh, just a yeah. comment? Uh, so you, if you go back to your picture of the typical belief, uh, yeah. So for instance, there uh, a strategy that uh, exploits uh, your current information would be to say, okay, uh, let me identify the maximum of this belief. So the point where the probability is maximal. And then I say, okay, I fully trust that my state is the one where the maximum is reached. And therefore I act accordingly. So in this case, the maximum is above the diagonal, which means that at that point, Q2 is larger than Q1. And then according to that, I, will, I would play action Two. Okay. Now this is provably suboptimal. Okay. And the reason is that sequences of observations might have carried you to a point uh, where it's just due to incomplete information about the system. Okay. Just because out of bad luck, perhaps the number of times that you've won uh, on one arm is larger than what the mean, the actual mean. Okay. On the contrary, what is an exploratory strategy? For instance, an exploratory strategy is, is, looks at this figure and says, oh, it's very broad along the Q2 axis, okay? So maybe I have to sample Q2 many times because I want to make it uh, sharper. So I have more uncertainty on Q2 than I have on Q1. So a very exploratory strategy decides I have to play Q2 in order to reduce to play two in order to reduce my uncertainty on Q2. Okay. In this case, the two things coincide, but in general, it's not the case. It's also provable that this kind of purely exploratory strategies, so strategies that look only at information rather than looking at rewards are suboptimal as well. So what is optimal and what Emmanuel will compute is the sweet spot between exploration and exploitation. Thank you, Emmanuel. Okay, uh, good, 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 good. Okay, so, uh, and now we, will, we want to deal and we will arrive to this um, sweet spot. So the idea is that we need something uh, more. So we have seen that uh, we have, uh, as Antonio said, we have our beliefs, we want to modify our beliefs. The point is that to modify our beliefs uh, in a simple way, uh, 
um, I mean, we, we, we want a, a proper way to modify our belief, and this is given by uh, bias update. Um, so clearly, when I have new information, I, I should change my belief, but how exactly to do that is not extremely simple because um, it has to be done in a proper mathematical uh, sense. So um, let's deal now with one case. So since it, we said that two arms are completely independent, now we, we consider just one arm and we consider it a, only the case of the Bernoulli distribution. So uh, we know what is the probability of a success given a state, which is called likelihood and we, which is the Bernoulli distribution. So again, we know that if we are in a state and we find out that we have uh, a result, this is just this, this formula here, which I already said many times. Then let's say that I have a, 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 a belief. So I have a prior. So I, I already have a distribution of probability of, over the state. The bias rule gives, our, gives us a way uh, to modify our belief. So the new belief, so the new distribution of the probability over the state, given that I had a result, is done by multiplying the likelihood, so the probability of have seen that result given a state, multiplied by the prior, so probability of being in that state. Okay, and then there is a normalizing factor which we just it makes it the probability, so we, we don't care. So as you can see, the new belief is just the old belief multiplied by the likelihood. Now, you can already see where, where this conjugate um, distribution enters. So the new belief is the old belief multiplied by something which is of a form to the Q to R, Y minus Q, Y minus Y minus R. So uh, you can see, or you can imagine that as, as pointed out yesterday also, if you have a, be, a belief in a form which is not transformed by multiplying by this likelihood, you can remain in the same functional form of, of belief even with some bias update. In, part, in particular case, the general space of belief it's a mess because it's all positive function that sum up to one in the, in the whole state or integrate to one. So in general, it's a complete mess, but for belief that have the special structure of being a better distribution, then we will see that things go, uh, are much, 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 much easier. So what is a better distribution? Better distribution is just one possible distribution, which is uh, given by two parameters. So for, for each uh, one, one dimensional degree of uh, freedom, you have two parameters, alpha and beta. And the belief of the state parameterized by alpha and beta is just Q to alpha minus one, minus minus Q beta minus one, and then again, a normalizing factor. You can see that now this beta function is, is a very similar functional form as on the, the likelihood. And in particular, what happens, let's say I, I, my belief for some reason it's a, it's a, as a beta form with alpha and beta. And then I, I do one observation and I got a success. I could have got a success or I could have got a failure. I got a success. What is my update? My update is that um, I have Q uh, this is the, the first part is the likelihood. So Q one minus Q to the zero. And then I have my beta and then I have normalizing factor. So this just means that my Q, which was to alpha minus one, now it's alpha plus one minus one. And the beta and the part with beta stays the same. So you can clearly see that this has first, uh, the prior was the beta alpha beta. Oh, sorry for that. And the posterior is a beta prime. So my new belief updated due to the fact that I got a success is just the beta, but in a different point, alpha plus one and beta. Okay. So if you start from a beta distribution, so if your belief is a beta distribution, then if you do a bias update, you end up in a beta distribution. We will see uh, in a certain point that if you do not start from a beta distribution, then things get 
ugly again. Luckily for us, the state of complete ignorance is a beta distribution. So the flat probability, one everywhere, so which says I have absolutely no prior uh, bias of where my state is, is a beta distribution. It's a beta distribution uh, of alpha equal one and beta equal one, okay? So whenever, from now on, we assume, and this is the important fact, okay? Uh, we assume that the beginning of, of, so before having any outcome, I could be anywhere in the space of state. And this is, um, this is mathematically um, uh, pointed, focused in the, po in the fact that uh, my zero belief, so the, pro the starting probability of being in a state, is one everywhere. It's a flat probability and it's equal to the product because they are independent. Beta distribution for Q1, which is alpha one equal one, beta one equal one, multiplied by beta Q2, alpha two equal one, beta two equal one, okay? Okay, so first part of code after half an hour, because this is, this is more like, uh, it's not exactly a coding exercise, it's, it's, a, it's a, like more a concrete example of, of uh, something which is a theoretical, uh, more abstract. So what I do now, I just created this very simple thing here, which, uh, plots a belief state, okay? So this is not even coding. It's just that uh, uh, fun, uh, fortunately the beta distribution are useful enough that uh, Python already has them inside. Uh, I have a probability density function now. Uh, definitely not, not now. Um, okay, so the two beta, uh, I just define the bin, I just define the, the plot. And uh, okay, so this is just something which allows me to show uh, what is the, um, the belief given the two alpha, beta, alpha, beta, okay? So let's, let's start with what I, uh, uh, I said was the total ignorance. So the total ignorance, we said that is when I have alpha one equal one, beta one equal one, alpha two equal one, beta one equal one. And indeed, I have a perfectly flat distribution. Okay, so now we can, play around a bit with this. Um, so let's say I pull arm one, okay? And I get a success. So what is the update? If, you, if anyone wants to, um, to intervene, now it's a good time. So this is a, a real question. What is the update? What, what, what changes uh, if I pull arm one and I get a success? Alpha one become two. Alpha one equal two, perfect. So you can see what happens. My belief has changed. Now you can see that my belief in Q2 is still homogeneous. I have no information on Q2. So every, every vertical uh, line is perfectly homogeneous. So, so there is still no information on Q2. But of course now my belief state says, okay, you know what? I don't think you have a very, very, very low probability in, in the one arm, okay? So the, the belief state has shifted. What is the incredibly helpful thing of, uh, of um, having a conjugate description of the, or like this? That here you have to plot a 2D function. Here you have four numbers, okay? So given that we are in the special thing that Bernoulli and beta distribution are conjugate and our prior was complete flat uh, uh, ignorance, now we have a, a proper way to translate this belief space, which were a function over 2D to four numbers. Okay, this is what I say much better now. So the belief which contains our current knowledge, knowledge uh, is what we have to exploit to, to make the best uh, policy I can. And we have a very simple tool for the belief update. And exactly as before, we are, now we have, before I just did one, now we have just the four rules. So I, I, if I start from alpha one, beta one, alpha two, beta two, and I do action one, then I can only change alpha one or beta one. And of course I change alpha one plus one if I have a success, 
an alpha, a beta one into plus one if I have a, a fail. And the same as uh, for the for the arm two. If I do action two, alpha two plus one if I get a success, uh, beta two plus one. You know. Okay, this this is just a way to move from a belief state to another belief state. Okay, so if I was in a belief state in which my uh, information so far was that I got that number of, of uh, success and that number of uh, fails, a new, a single unit of new information would bring me either uh, in, in one of these four directions. Okay. Okay, good. So what was the history, which yesterday you said, what is the history that determines, uh, that shows you what is the, um, the, your current belief that sufficient statistics of your history, which gives, uh, which are uh, um, written in your belief, is just the number of wins and number of losses so far. Okay. Starting if you started from total ignorance. So now, a small thing which can back backfire is that now we will do. This was in the belief state. So what what does it mean from a the point of view of having real machines, uh, single points, real machine, which can give me one another. So right now we are dealing with belief. So we always integrate over all possible state inside my belief. Now I want to show you that it's exactly the same thing if you do a proper, uh, a proper trajectory uh, with given state. Okay, so then if you have a question, please do. I'm doing, the other thing around. So I'm now I will do this. I will say, okay, let's take all the history with six steps. Okay, then let's take 200,000 randomly chosen states. So I, for 200 times, I take one particular point in my space uh, state uniformly. So I have a Q1, a Q2, and then I extract for six times either a, 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 a fail or a, or, a, um, or a success, okay? So instead of dealing with belief, now I'm doing the frequency part. So I, for 200 times, I just take one single uh, two arm bandit and it's okay, let's do it six times. Then I count how many times it, it, it uh, had a success how many times he had a fail, okay? So these are all different machines which have different probability of, of doing there, but all of them together arrived to a single point, which is described by what? It's described by alpha equal five, beta equal three, okay? Since I started from a completely uniform description of the world, each of them is completely different, but I chose only those which end up in this point alpha equal five, beta equal three, okay? And then I save only those which arrive there because others have clearly gone elsewhere. And I do, okay, what is my distribution of, if I arrived in that point there, what is my distribution uh, in the Q space, okay? I just take all the points which arrive there. I, I write myself what is the Q and I do, okay, let's do an Instagram of this. Do you have any question about that? I assume no. Okay, this is still calculating. Okay, what I'm plotting here. So above I have an histogram of all the state I chose randomly and I follow them. Okay, so this is, these are not belief, this are a real machine. I chose them randomly, but then I select the probability following exactly what they, uh, what they wanted to do with their very exact probability Bernoulli, okay? And now I chose only a point, which was alpha five, uh, beta three. And I saw where do they, did they come from? And this is the description. And then I can do the opposite file. So what is the belief? So the complete abstract uh, belief, which is encoded by alpha five and beta three, 
starting from ignorance is this one, okay? So you can see that belief is rather powerful thing. It's, it's, it's an information, it's a complete information of uh, what you, what, where you could have been, okay? For all the state. Okay, so um, to summarize, we, uh, we have this very simple problem here, which we know everything if, except for the states. We go into the belief, which are distribution over the states. This distribution over the states uh, can be used um, in a simple way because their updates following bias is simple for two reasons. The first reason is that I put myself in a beta distribution at the beginning. And the second reason is that if you put yourself in a beta distribution at the beginning and you do an update, then you still end up in a beta distribution. For the, the, the simple reason that a beta distribution formally is very close, uh, is structurally the same as the um, likelihood. Okay, so this here and this here deal well together because multiplied they uh, get again a better distribution. What we mean, and this allows us to have the transition. So whenever I am in a beta and I know the next outcome, I know where I'm moving to. What this means, and I wanted to show all the, thing, the same thing. So we said many times now that if you start from a beta function, you end up in a beta function. And this was here, okay? So I chose Q randomly from zero to one. Let's say I don't want to do that. Let's say I want to take them, okay? Not randomly. I want to take them in a other way. And uh, for example, I just, uh, instead of taking it randomly, I just do this, okay? Instead of having from zero to one, I'm taking from zero to a half, okay? So it's the same as before. I, I'm taking randomly and I'm collecting only those with an history of uh, four success and two uh, fails. And my question is, can I describe this with a beta function with uh, alpha equal five and beta equal three? No, okay, because, because alpha equal five, beta equal three is a good description of my belief for four success and two losses, only if I starting from beta one and, and uh, alpha one, which was my total ignorance, okay? So from now on, you can think of alpha and beta as a description of your history, but you also have to be um, reminded that this works only if you started from a total ignorance or beta one uh, and alpha one, okay? So, uh, just a small side remark. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, in the in the Bayesian uh, literature, these parameters uh, m and n are uh, uh, called pseudo counts. Okay, in order also to distinguish them from the fact that these are not really sample uh, counts. Okay, they are they are called pseudo counts because depending on where you start with the prior, uh, they 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 can take different values. Okay. So always keep in mind this distinction between what is uh, Bayesian and, and what is uh, uh, frequentist. The two things are uh, consistent at the level of beliefs, but uh, you have to be careful, okay? Yeah, exactly for this. If, if you want to get a bit confused, and we all want always to get a bit confused, you can say, okay, uh, I, I, I don't want to start from total ignorance ever. I want to start from a system which is very skewed in one part. I want to start from a beta, which is uh, uh, six. I want to start from this. Okay. I don't know why. And then I do the same thing. Now, uh, the, the, this pseudo counts, M1, N1, will lead. So if you have a beta, which is uh, 20, 15, uh, 15, 12, then it clearly the number of success and fails need to be related to these numbers. I think this is what uh, Antonio was uh, yeah. suggesting. Okay, so um, good. Now I think we will make a break. If you have questions, please ask. And then we will 
exploit all these new, new ways to deal with, uh, with belief and actually re-translate re uh, this, this problem into a MDP, which we know how to solve. Um, so, uh, if you have questions, uh, otherwise, I think we can make a break. Yeah, maybe we can reconvene at uh, five past 10. Okay, sounds like it. Sounds like a yes. See you in fifteen minutes. Uh, Sorry. Yeah, Manuel, could you please? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Please, uh, uh, pause the recording. Yeah. Uh, yes. Did it? Okay. So good. Let's uh, resume. I uh, resume the recording. Let's uh, share the screen again. Okay. Okay, so we have arrived to a compact description of a belief. Uh, so as we saw, belief, belief is a distribution of the states, but now we have a compact way of writing what is the belief, uh, assuming um, a prior uh, of total ignorance. Um, so now the space is defined only by these four uh, pseudo countings, uh, N1, M1, N2, M2. Let us imagine that we have uh, such a fails and uh, successes. And then my, my belief uh, can be perfectly uh, described by this by a beta function using these four parameters. So we can use these four numbers here to rewrite everything as a mark the decision process. So in, from now on, what, uh, what I, I will use the term belief or state in a hopefully not so confusing way. I, I will perhaps say it's state because the ESR are the states of a new mark decision process, but I will write B. It means that this new state are actually beliefs, okay? So, we went from a POMDP into an MDP into this new space. Okay, so the new space for this MDP are the uh, are this belief and can be described by these four numbers here. This means that we 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 created this this uh, mapping from what it was a, a complex function in in a two D space to a single point in this new uh, four dimensional spaces of belief. Okay, every single point in this lattice corresponds to a belief. And you can see there is one, two, three, and there is also a fourth uh, axis uh, going in the fourth dimension as clearly visible by the wriggling of the gray arrow. So if we want to construct an MDP, we need this usual, um, the usual properties on MDP. So we need states, we need the transitions, in the state. So a transition now, it's, it's exactly as I was saying, uh, Antonio. So it's, uh, let us, as I see a hand. Sorry, uh, we, we are looking at a PDF file. Is that what you were wondering? No, uh, sorry. Ah, this, this, because I wanted you to remind that um, I, I will put also this, this uh, lecture was done previously by uh, two uh, colleagues of mine. And I wanted also to, to point that I will put in the, in the folder also this PDF here, which is essentially uh, the more technical parts of, of, the, of the class. Uh, but this is not what I wanted to show you. Uh, but this will be, so this you can see now it's the same, but now it, it, everything is it's defined uh, properly defined from a mathematical point of view. Thanks uh, for reminding me, but now I have to change my sharing. Uh, so I, I apologize. And I will share this screen here. Okay, sorry. Um, okay, what I was saying, can you see now the usual? Okay. Yes. Uh, sorry about that. Um, what I wanted you to, to, to show that we went from a function in 2D, so what we have on the left, uh, now it's a single point in this um, lattice of four dimension. Now you can see what I was meaning by the fourth dimension axis uh, wriggling in uh, gray in, into the unknown. Okay, so 
what was before a distribution function, now it's just a single point. Uh, and this also, I, I, what was I meaning that now I will use B, uh, but I will call it state because the beliefs of the old PUMDP now are the state of our, our new MDP. We need everything to define MDP, so we have defined the states. Now we have to define the transition. So let us imagine that we are we are in a in a state of belief um, given by four numbers with pseudo counting n1, m1, n2, m2. Then let us assume we do an action. Okay. If I assume to do the action one, I can have two outcome. I can have outcome success, outcome fail. Okay. What is the probability of having a success if I am in a, in a belief state N1, M1, N2, M2, and uh, I do action one? Well, it's actually given by the average probability, which is, which is the, the um, essentially it's, it's given by this formula here, which, which is N1 plus one, which is the past uh, it, it's the, uh, the past pseudo counting of success, success, successes divided by n1 plus uh, m1 plus 2, which is the old pseudo counting in a sense. Okay, so you, you, you should and you could do it mathematically. So if you integrate over all the states uh, weighted by the belief in the state and you are ask in each of these states, what is the probability of taking action one and giving a success. But in the end, uh, the result is very simple and it's just that it's this here, okay? In a sense, this is, we said that the mathematical uh, result of being in a state of belief of these numbers and doing this action and, and having a success is given by how many success you already had, okay? So, but this number here is the result of the integrating of the all possible state you uh, can visit in that belief with that uh, with probability given by that belief, okay? But this just means that if I, I am in a state of belief and I do the action, I can calculate what is the probability of, of, of my result and so I can calculate what is the probability of, of, uh, of ending up in a different state. Because since a success from a state of belief, uh, N1, M1, N2, M2, brings me to N1 plus one, M1, M2, M2, okay? I can calculate that this is the transition probability of uh, being in that belief state and doing that action and getting that result. Okay, so uh, I can I have only four possible uh, outcomes. If I take action one, I can only change my belief of of uh, of my of the probability of arm one. Okay, so these two first lines. If I can, if I take action two, I can only change my belief on on Q two, and the the change is actually very simple. So with the probability which comes out from my previous by, uh, belief, which is, so the probability is given in by the, uh, this part on the right, I will end up either in a system with, which have N2 plus one or in a system with M2 plus one. And one, I will end up uh, with, a, with a probability of having a success and the other one I will end up with the same probability of having a, um, a fail, okay? Which means that I'm actually always moving from each point, I can only move in four different direction. If I take action, if I consider only the arm one, I will only move in the plane of, in the plane of, uh, in this plane here where only one. And in the other case, if I take arm two, I can only move to the two uh, different um, points in belief connected by the two different axes, okay? But this means also, which is uh, something nice, that um, you, as you can see, you always move from a state with a certain sum of uh, pseudo counting to a state with a sum of pseudo counting plus one. Okay. Again, 
This is nothing but my new transitions uh, in, my, in, my new, um, in my new MDP, which is the MDP of beliefs. Do you have a question about this? Okay. As I was pointing out in, in the PDF, you can have perhaps a more detailed and technical uh, discussion of how this integration uh, works. Uh, but I hope that at, at least the general idea is not counter, too much counterintuitive to you. So the new rewards, I, I have to calculate the, the function uh, rewards given a belief. And uh, uh, actually they, they are the same as the transition. So if I'm in a state of belief described by N1, M1, N2, N2, uh, I my probability of having a success is given by this number here. My probability of me having a, a fail is given by uh, this number here. So of course, uh, the reward function is, is connected by that. So in a sense, this is, this is my function. So it says that the reward uh, from, if you go from a belief to a, a, the next belief, it's one only if I'm moving to the belief where I have had a success in N1, in the arm one, or it, it's one if I have, uh, if I'm moving from a belief of N2 to N2 plus one, which is uh, where I, um, I, which correspond to a success in N2. Okay, so we have defined everything we, we needed for a new MVP. This new MTP have states, which have these four integers. These four integers correspond to a perfect uh, belief of our, uh, to a correspond perfectly to the belief I have of my states uh, given the pseudo counting. I have the action I can take, which I can take uh, arm one or arm two. I have a transition probabilities, depending on the belief, I have different transition of success of, of fail and this, lead me, as we've seen from, uh, from uh, four integers to four integers, which only one is changed and it's changed by one. Okay, so it's, it's, a, it's a, like a grid word, but I can only move in a, in a line along the, I can only increase by one my, my total uh, number of integers. Okay, right now we have defined a problem. And if I gave you this problem here without saying where it comes from, you could have already solved it because this is uh, just a um, MDP and we want to solve it. Okay, so what we want to do, we want to optimize uh, the value function of, of being in a belief, which is none other than taking uh, the, the value is if we take a policy. So if we assign to each belief an action to take, we start from the B0, which is my prior beta of, of total ignorance and we go on and on following the policy and we just accumulate the, and we want to see the expected, expected value of, of, uh, of all the, the possible uh, outcomes discounted by gamma, okay? Which is standard definition of value. Um, the optimal, uh, the optimal uh, equation now is that the optimal value is the one in which um, you, you, for each, belief you take the best action which the action which maximize uh, the, re, the immediate reward you get plus gamma the uh, value of where you end up and wh why is this so similar to the old to the standard MDP um, this is, is a product of the fact that we chose this special Bernoulli problem with so the Bernoulli and beta uh, helped us with, uh, with uh, reducing the state space. And also that uh, with the whole transition probability of being going from S to S prime uh, was trivial in the sense that you don't move. So essentially those property there allowed us to rewrite it in, a, in a, something which is a MDP with no problem at all, okay? So if I am in a state of belief, I can take action one on action two. This action with some probability will give success or fail. So will give us some rewards. 
and they will move us accordingly to a belief which have either a, a, an N plus one if it was a success or, a, or, a, or, a, or a, with some probability will move to a, an M plus one if it was a, a fail. And then I, I just check, okay, I, this was my, my, I chose the ARM1 and I have this expected result. I can choose ARM2 and I have this expected reward. Which ARM is better? Okay, I will take that. And this is just the, the way, uh, uh, the usual way uh, it's written the optimal, uh, optimality for this kind of function. Again, simpler, what is the, the best policy is just that which, um, which maximize this, this thing. So, uh, okay, you, you do a value for being a, in a belief and doing an action and you take the best one. Okay, uh, so in, in this way, um, we are left just to computing this, this value function. We encounter now a small problem which we have not encountered before. So even if the system is exactly as solvable as before, we have this, uh, this problem with now the state space uh, is infinite. What, what does it mean? It means that I was, we saw that the beliefs uh, were uh, composed by four integer numbers. Unfortunately, these four integer numbers can uh, go uh, to infinity. Okay. So there is no way to make a proper tabular um, description of the problem because now I would need an infinite 4D matrix. Okay. Um, but so this in a sense is something which it's uh, this from now on, it's not a problem of the fact that we are an MP on DP. It's, it's, it's a problem which can happen normally solving any MDP, which is the problem. Okay, what happens if I have an infinite uh, set of state? Now enters the good thing, uh, which is, we've seen before, which is transitions, uh, as we saw here, you can see, it, transition from a time T to a time plus one, T plus one, always add one to some integers, okay? So you, you start, we start with the prior, which is described by um, beta one, 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 okay? Which is described by N1 equal zero, M1 equal zero, N2 equal zero, N2 equal zero. And then we go away from the origin, okay? So the total number increases always. Uh, if we have a, a depletion of a uh, discount factor gamma, then if, if we are interested in, in uh, what happens at, at the origin, of course, this, this uh, re, sucks, uh, sucks, uh, uh, con, um, following rewards are always discounted by this gamma. So I can, I can and, and we are always going in the same direction. So we can say, okay, let's create a, a, a boundary uh, far enough from the center and I will be sure that, to, that the, I will have spent so much time arriving there that the rewards from there on will be so uh, insignificant for my value, which I can discard. Okay. Uh, in particular, uh, this is what we do. So we say, okay, uh, let's say, okay, the, 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 the gamma, uh, the weight of being uh, gamma from a time larger than that boundary time, uh, it's gamma uh, to the T. So the, the, because all, all, all the time you get gamma value, gamma value, gamma value, gamma value, gamma value. So if you do it T times, this is gamma to the T. I say, okay, I don't care. Uh, I don't care with the tolerance of epsilon. And then you say, okay, if I decide some epsilon, which is my tolerance and which I don't care anything uh, smaller than that, I can choose a boundary length t equal just you can you can do it uh, epsilon equal gamma to the uh, t t equal log epsilon divided by log gamma, which just tells me okay uh, I only need to limit myself to this uh, state here, to this um, group of state subset of state here. And then I know that discarding the actual result above this, this T will lead me at most to an error of epsilon. Okay, so we just define the subset of beliefs 
uh, defined by this, this integer such that the sum of the integers arrive to uh, t. Okay. Why is this? Again, because if you remember at any, you can, have, you can change four, all four of the integer numbers, but only by one. So every, every time you, you, you spend, you, there is a, a new um, ex extraction, the sum of the integers goes up by, by one. So in a way, this, this is, uh, this is um, similar to uh, what we've done the first time, which we went from the, the end and we moved back by one, 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 one. Okay, so only this, so we had all the collection of the state at each time, in a sense. Okay, if you remember the traveling salesman, you had all the states with zero cities left, all the state with one city left, all the state with two. Now we have all the state with T extraction of T imaginary extraction, all the state with T minus minus extraction. So these are slides of, of uh, states all condensed together. The only point is that the, uh, with the traveling salesman, the end point was just one and was perfectly defined. So we knew the real value from the last city because it was just the city to go back. Now, that point there, we just say, okay, you know what? I don't care. That value there, it will be, would be taken with an approximation because even if I'm wrong there, that that uh, error there will will be small, smaller than epsilon, and I don't care about epsilon. Okay, do you have problems in this? So this is a general way to deal with system which uh, in which you can define clearly an arrow of time, and you have an infinite uh, an infinite uh, uh, dimension of spaces, but you decide to make to put a cutoff. Okay. Uh, so we use the Bellman equation, uh, as we know. So um, we just use the, we take the, uh, we, ju we just want to, to do the usual, so the best optimal value of the function in a belief. Uh, but now we, we restrict ourselves to our subset uh, we want. Uh, it, you have to do a, a one of two actions. And this one of two actions, since the, since the number, uh, the subset are, are are, uh, are perfectly um, stacked one of the other in time. So if I want to calculate the optimal value for a belief, which is a time t, so in this subset in which the sum of all integers is, is t, then I will only uh, need to worry about, uh, about states uh, which are at uh, t, t plus one, because my probability of, oh, sorry, this was a v, I apologize. My probability of moving is only uh, and getting a reward is only uh, non-zero if I move to from the sum of t equal t, sum of integers equal t sum of integers equal t plus one, okay. Which basically says that to compute the value of state b, one needs to know only the values of state b t plus one, okay. As we said, we took the boundary b t. So the boundary in which the total sum of integer is such a value, uh, capital T, which is what our tolerance uh, is, uh, is. And then we can just do what we did last time. So we go backwards. So we assign a value to, 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 to B, to, uh, to, to the boundary values, and we go backwards and backwards and backwards and backwards, okay? as the traveling salesman going backwards and backwards looking for the best action between r1 and 2 will give us the best optimal way in the first update we have the best optimal op option uh, action only for the boundary when we have to the state below the boundary we're going to two states below the boundary three states below the boundary and at the end we will have the optimal action up to the center so now something which we uh, want to point out this is the optimal policy for each state of belief as it's unique. So we will have for each state of belief a unique action to do because also it's deterministic. Okay, so we, we will have, it's, it's not like we will have solved one of the possible, we have solved all 
possible cases of to uh, the all possible um, beliefs cases. Okay, we have solved all the issues which can come up if I have if I assume that I have a complete ignorance of the of the of the first uh, in my first belief, and I have some history of pseudo counting. Okay. Okay, how to do it properly? Uh, this is this is now the code. Uh, it, first of all, we decide, as we said, we have infinite states, so we have to limit ourselves with a cut uh, cut off. We decide that our tolerance is uh, is some value. We know that the discount factors uh, discount factor, so the rewards in the future are discounted by this uh, factor here every every time I, I move. It's 0 0.9, uh, which allows us to, to have a, a, a T, which is just a, um, this our cutoff boundary. Okay. Um, okay. So essentially, this, this gives us, us 87 steps. Okay. So we will have to compute every step, every state of belief in which the sum of the integers is up to 87. And then we'll say, okay, from now on, we don't care anymore. Uh, this is a lot because of course we have to, to create a way to enumerate all the states at the same time, time. So again, if you remember, since all the integers can only uh, go up by one every time. So we want to uh, enumerate every time, every state possible at a given sum. And this is what it does. So uh, you see, okay, I want to uh, enumerate all the state in which the sum is five. And essentially this is what it does. So it says, okay, uh, let's keep uh, track of the states. Let's, do, uh, let's go uh, from all the states up to, to, to the number there, from all the states except uh, what I, uh, I I have because the sum has to be five. So this is just a very stupid way uh, to enumerate all the possible combination of integer which sum up to a certain number. Particularly if you do, uh, you can you can see that you want to do all the states which sum up to five, and now you have all the states which are sum up to five. Okay. If you want to be sum up to ten, you have. Uh, a good number, okay? So I, I will not show you uh, 80, 87, but you can imagine that this is quite a, quite a, uh, ex, 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 um, not cheap in memory. Okay, so um, what to do with the boundary? So we, had, we said that the boundary, we don't care about the boundary, but actually we do something which, uh, we have some information on the boundary. So the boundary is the state of belief. Uh, instead of doing, okay, we do the optimal thing, we do, we do the suboptimal point. So in the state of belief of the boundary, which are those in which I have made T pseudo, uh, I have T observations, so T percepts in a sense, um, I can do, okay, you know what? I can, I will act on the, on the, on the arm which is my belief it's better, okay? So since I have a belief on the two arm, I can say, okay, um, I will exploit this information. It's not, uh, now I don't care about what is the violence of the belief. It's just, okay, I have that belief, which is, my belief, current belief is that on average, uh, one arm is better than the other, I will do that, okay? Um, and this is done here, so for, if I'm, I, I enumerate all the states at the boundary, so some of the integers is T, uh, and for all the states, I just evaluate what is the probability of success given arm one, the probability of success given arm two. And I say, you know what? I define the value, which is wrong, but it's a good approximation. But again, the error will be diluted going, going back. And the value is just the best of the two actions. Okay, so I will do, I will exploit my, my current belief there, and I don't care what happens afterwards. It, this is my 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 last state. I am I am caring. Okay, and also the best action, of course, is going to be do that, do, pull that arm there. Okay, and then simply as in the uh, traveling salesman, you say, okay, I. 
I now it's not in the traveling salesman, you really had the optimal value for the boundary. Now it's not an optimal value, but it's an approximate optimal value. But we don't care. So the next step is the, to iteratively program it, uh, propagate the values from this fake optimal value of the boundary towards the, uh, the, all the states with, uh, with a capital T minus one. And then again, 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 okay? So if you, get, uh, if you get a state, you can understand what is the value because you know now for the two independent arm, you given it the belief of the state, you have like probability of win uh, given the belief of, of, the, of the state, you have a probability to win with the other arm. And then again, it's the probability to win. Then I have the reward of winning plus gamma ma, uh, multiplied by the value since I was arm one and a, and a, and a one. Now, what is the value state I'm, I'm with new state of belief I'm going to, it's state zero, so it's n1 plus one, n2, n1, n2, plus this what is this way is probability of, of failing. Uh, I don't have one because I failed, so I, I do not have a direct reward, and I have gamma multiplied by the state, the value of the state of belief, which is the same as before, so n1 and and one and one and two and two, but now my pseudo counting of failing is plus one. Okay, so if I imagine to be in a state of belief and one and two and one and two, the probability to win is this. Okay, and where I where I end up in a belief, if I imagine to be in this belief and I win, is this. Okay. So this is none other these two lines for arm one are not are none other that if I took uh, action one and I do sum over the new state, this here, okay? So I'm literally applying the Bellman uh, optimal uh, equation because I am assuming, and this time is only approximate, it's not 100% accurate, that these values are already optimal because they, they lie at a higher level. They, are, they lie, all lie closer to the boundary. I'm starting to the boundary and I pretended that those were optimal and I go back and I pretend those upwards uh, in, the, in the flow are, op are optimal, okay? So I have the quality, which means uh, what is in, in the, what, what is the, cumulative discounted value of doing arm one, cumulative discounted arm, arm, of doing arm two. And then of course I can, I have two, I can compare and I will, I will have its information so I can do, okay, okay, what is the best one between one and two and what is the arm I should pull? So it just returns what is the best uh, value in that state, in that belief state, and what is the best action to do in that belief that deals with, uh, Okay, so this does only for uh, one belief state, but now I have to do it all the belief states starting from the boundary downwards. And this is what I do here. Okay, I start in range T, so I'm excluding uh, T, I'm, I'm, I'm going up to the boundary and I'm going backwards. This is Python. Uh, way to say I'm going backwards. So I get all the states at, at that point there. And for all the state in this, oh, this is, sorry, to be, and for all the state in this subset at, uh, with the sum of integer r to t, I just say, okay, what is the best value? What is the optimal value? What is the best action? And I store it, okay? And I've done everything, 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 everything. And this is essentially, um, solving my issue. Uh, oh, I have to do this before I go there. I should always. Uh, yes. Sorry, I, I forgot that I had to restart everything, so. Okay. 
Good. Okay. So once I did that, I have the perfect solution, and at least uh, in in the limit that I have uh, I have fixed the cutoff. Okay. Do we have a question for about this? Okay, I assume everybody is more or less desperate. Okay, so um, we can now check the, the numbers of, of this. So um, good, let's, for example, let's plot uh, a solution. So, um, okay, this is just, this is just what happens. Okay, so I took this this T, uh, capital T, as before. I I this was already computing all the all the values and best action. Okay, this is just a script to to properly plotting it. And now what I have, I have actually the solution uh, for n two equal five, n two equal five. Okay, so since the hyperspace of belief is it's uh, four numbers it's very very hard to to make any reasonable plot uh, in this space so instead we say okay we fix n2 equal 5 m2 equal 5 which means uh, that my current belief for q2 uh, is a belief which is more centered to fairness because this is uh, equivalent to a history of four success and four, uh, oh, four uh, so it, it's a belief which is it's, a, it's more or less centered in, in, the, in the center. Uh, so I have not a strong belief, but I have a belief of a fair coin. And now I'm looking at all the possible other state of belief for the other arm. Okay, you see what, uh, what I'm doing. So the value is what I expect my value to be in the future if I start in a, in a belief, which is characterized now by N1 and M1. Okay, um, now, and this is the best action to take. So let's look a bit about uh, of, of this plot. Uh, and if you have, specific question about these plots, please ask, okay? So this is just, I've solved the system with a cutoff rather far away. I've, um, I've put myself in a situation in which my, I, I fixed my belief of, of uh, the ARM2, which is a not strong belief of fairness of, of uh, ARM2. And I'm checking in the space of beliefs for the ARM1, and I'm checking what is the value and what is my best action to do. So the value it already gives us some nice information. You see my pointer, right? Please, somebody, do. okay, good. So look here, so the, the value, so since gamma equal to 0 0.1, okay, 0 0.1, I expect, uh, I have a discounted value which is, probably nine, 10, okay, so that, that range in there. So here we, where I have that N1 were extremely superior to M1, I have a very strong value, which means that I am very confident that this is a, a very uh, biased arm uh, towards the one. I will choose arm, arm one because I see that it's much better and the value which accumulate is very high, okay. Then clearly, if you go towards the, the middle point, so this red region here, I'm, it's clear, it's the best, best action to take arm one, and I take it. And indeed, the, arm, the value decreases going away from this axis. This axis here is the axis in which I had, uh, it's almost clear to me that I had, uh, um, that I had uh, a, a super unfair arm one, which always gave me a success because I essentially, it's the belief of having seen a lot of successes and very few, uh, it's equivalent to the belief of having seen a lot of success and very few losses. And then when I arrive here, uh, everything is flat for a very simple reason, because I do not expect to do, uh, 
Uh, I do not expect to do to take arm one, but I expect to take arm two. And arm two, I do not have uh, that information, but I, I know that it should be fair. So now here where, where is uh, orange, it's, it's, I, ex I expect to do arm two and I expect that um, since it's fair, I will have less, I have half of the value of the maximum value, okay? But this is a, a less important information, but what I wanted you to focus on is this uh, figure here, which I find very interesting. So this is the best action to take. I plotted the, green, uh, the yellow line, which is the diagonal line. So every belief above the diagonal line says that my current belief is that arm one is better than arm two, because my, my belief of arm two is that it, the probability, the, the maximum probability in the belief of arm two is 0 0.5. Since I have equal number N2 and M2, my maximum probability in, in the space of Q2 is at 0 0.5. And that probability there corresponds to the yellow line. So if I am above it, my current maximum probability in the belief of uh, arm one is actually better than the maximum probability of belief in arm two. But you see that there are a non, non vanishing small of region where actually the best action is arm two. Can you guess why? I do not hear anybody. I don't know if they... Okay, so this goes back, uh, goes back to what we discussed at the beginning. So why is this not, not a, a trivial? Why reinforcement learning is never trivial? Because we have to carefully balance two drive. One drive is exploitation, which means my current belief is that this is better. I should do that. I should only do that. Never think about anything else in my life. And exploration. So my current belief is that this is better, but my current belief could be uh, garbage. So I should uh, go around. And you can see now. Whoa, sorry, 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 sorry. You can see now that here, close to the yellow line, my current belief in in uh, in the arm two it's it's 0 0.5 my current belief in arm one is slightly above 0 0.5 okay but as you can see my my belief in in arm one actually comes from hyper parameters for example where i am at it's like 40 40 okay maybe it's uh, it's 35 30 okay which gives me a very strong belief that my, my arm has a probability centered towards a value which is 0 0.5, but it's also very narrowly centered. But now I have a belief, I have a belief in, uh, in, um, in arm two, which is actually centered in 0 0.5, but it's actually quite weak. We can plot it now. So uh, we take 35, 35, 5. Let's do it. Okay, so this is, this is our current belief. This is exactly the belief we are here somewhere. I mean, somewhere, okay, close to that. And you can see that the, the best here, it says, oh, clearly the maximum of its probability is above 0 0.5. The other one is in 0 0.5. So it, it, exploitation is better. But you can see that actually there is a very considerable amount of probability of being in a system in which Q2 is actually above the diagonal, okay? It means that for this specific uh, region here, the best po possible action is actually to explore Q2 because there is a very reasonable probability that it, that it ends up in a state in which uh, Q2 is actually much better, okay? This form here 
of, of uh, exploitation and, uh, and uh, exploration. So this uh, small uh, tongue of blue curve there is why we need the reinforcement learning. If you did not have that, your value would be smaller. Okay. And this is essentially uh, the point of reinforcement learning. You find a compromise between exploration and exploitation, which is not at all easy to find uh, in, a, in other ways, okay? Um, so uh, now I wanted to let, if I have a few minutes left, um, I want to, to, to show this. So, so far we worked with beliefs. So we have a proper system. We have solved the problem. See, we're problem with total ignorance as a as a prior. So we start with a, a completely uh, indiscriminate. Uh, we could have any state, and we solved in a bias in a Bayesian way. So at a, any point, it's like, uh, what is my current belief? I assume, I imagine that I extract things following my belief. I, I imagine that everything follows my belief and this is what happens next. And we have a solution for this kind of thing. So this is the optimal solution if my world is completely Bayesian. So if I assume that at each time I will have a randomly distributed following the belief, okay. But then we started from a very different point. We started from this was a, a frequentistic problem. We have, a, we have one, I've been given two coins, so they are there, and and they and and somebody wanted to, to know what is the best thing to do. In this particular case, uh, the two uh, uh, the two the solution for Bayesian can be applied. So we have a, we have a perfect uh, optimized set of actions for each set of, of beliefs, and actually applies even if I do what is generally not the same thing. So I take one single case and I flip, I truly flip the coins and depending on the flipping of the coins, I decide what to do next, which are not the same thing. The Bayesian part is I take beliefs, I take all possible states which are compatible with that belief and I follow all of them, okay? It's a much larger one. But in this particular case, I can say, okay, but does it work if I also have a simple question which I have two coins and I have no idea what to do? So this is what I want to do now. So uh, I start with a total ignorance belief, but I actually start with a, a very specific real state. So I start with a state with Q1 equals 0 0.45 and Q2 equals 0 0.55. And what I do is actually I take this two arm and the result is fail and win. And I'm doing up to 87 steps. And what I do is I check uh, I, I record what is my history of this particular specific thing. So this is not a belief anymore. This is just one, uh, one history of one instance. And I take the best action uh, to do, the best action that I want to do following the, the, the solution in a Bayesian sense. And I just take the result of a random polynomial with the Q1, I know that it's there. And I, I either uh, take arm one or two, I collect the history and I'm a new belief system in belief world. And I use that belief for the optimal solution for that belief. And I apply it to my concrete example here. And I see where it goes. And where I go is, okay, I begin, I pull the, I was in ignorance, I pull the first arm and the result was fail. So I got shift in there. Then I pull the second arm and the result was a win. So I got shifted in that corner there. But I pulled again, the result was a fail. So I got shifted there. Then it was a win, then it was a win. And then I go, da, 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 da. And at the end, turns up. Is this the proper? Okay. It then it ends up doing the optimal thing, which is the second arrow. But, and you can see now it, it has also, it is rather strange, but it's true. 
they also not explored much, but it, 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 it is sufficient for him to be here. Okay, have I grabbed, I should have taken, wait. While I do this, uh, do you have questions? Sorry. Yes. Is there a way to make the model uh, more explorative or more um, exploitative? Uh, well, the, for example, the, the, the Antonio for, was proposing two models which are extremely explorative or extremely exploitative. So a perfectly exploitative model would be uh, to choose the arm which has the maximum probability of success. Uh, sorry, sorry, Mariah. let's call them strategies. Strategy, sorry, 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 strategy. Uh, and uh, and this, the other strategy which is properly explorative is, for example, choose the arm which has the largest, uh, which has the largest, uh, um, for example, the, the least number of trials, okay? You at all times choose the, the arm in which you have the least number of trials because that, that means that your, your information is, is lower or you can do other information things. But this is strategy, but those are um, worse strategy than this. This is by definition the optimal strategy combining ex exploitative and uh, um, explorative strategy. Was this the question? Because I, I'm talking about strategy, you were talking about models. Is this the, the, the question? Was, was this the question? Uh, I was, th I was uh, thinking if uh, there uh, was the possibility to set uh, a certain kind of trash threshold that uh, for, uh, for choosing the, the strategies. Well, uh, I'm not sure I understand the question, but maybe I can try and clarify some, some points. Uh, so you can construct uh, very different kinds of uh, heuristic strategies, like the ones I said before, which are uh, definitely suboptimal. So too exploitative or too explorative. There are other strategies. Uh, uh, one of them, them very famous is uh, called Thompson sampling. Thompson sampling, uh, what it does is just looks at the belief, uh, the current belief, uh, and then extracts one state at random according to the belief and picks the optimal action for that state. Okay, This is a heuristic strategy, and it's a good heuristic strategy. But still, it's suboptimal in the Bayesian sense. There is that. That means, if my states are picked according to my prior, then the strategy that you find here by solving the Bellman's equation is probably the best one. What is not obvious in general is that if you use a Bayesian strategy with a certain prior, uniform, for instance, but your world is giving you coins according to another distribution, then these two things need not necessarily have the same performance. Okay, so it's important to first clarify the distinction between uh, heuristic and optimal strategies. Okay, heuristic strategies you can construct, but they are lower in performance in the Bayesian sense. There is given that prior, they are they have a, a worse performance than the optimal Bellman. First thing. Second thing is that. Any strategy you come up with, the Bellman or the heuristic, okay, uh, are more or less well suited to that prior. And if you compare them with other priors, with data coming from different initial distributions, they might have different performances. I hope this clarifies some of the things. Otherwise, you can try and reformulate the question. Uh, so in the end, we choose the best. Uh, we choose the best policies that um, that combine the best, the, the best exploitation and the best exploration. So we we, we can't choose uh, in uh, any way how to yeah. enforce mm -hmm. the the policy to follow a, a much more exploitative model. Exactly for that given prior and for that given model. That's the best thing to do.
Okay, and we can't force uh, to move uh, our policy toward uh, our. If we, if we do that, we lose in performance. If we for, if we force it to be more exploitative or more explorative, we will have a lesser expected gain. Where expectation, remember, is always done over beliefs. Okay, thanks. Sure. I think we can wrap up uh, because we're running too late unless there are burning questions. So I think as usual, you will find uh, the, uh, the notebook on uh, the Slack channel as, as soon as uh, uh, Emmanuel has some time to uh, upload it. And uh, otherwise we'll meet uh, uh, again on next uh, Wednesday for the theory lesson, okay? Uh, you're muted. I, I feel still muted. I, I think you can quit recording anyway. Uh, sure.